Hello and welcome to The Human Now, where we're discussing ideas around what it means to be in this state of time and most importantly, making positivity louder. No matter where you are around the world, welcome, no matter what mood you're in or what you're feeling, we hope this podcast helps to lift your vibration today. I'm Cash. And I'm Perry. And, and this, this is The, the Human, Human Now. Now. What's up? Oh, man, we're back. <laughs> it feels like it's been so long. It has. It's been... It has it has been a, too a, a long, long eh? yeah. And I don't know. I feel like it's not really. It's it's just excitement, man. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad to just be back. Nick. Um, what a way to start the weekend and to be sitting here. I feel like I've missed your energy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed just hanging out. You know, yes, yeah. like I, I find like these, <laughs> like when we come and we sit and we chat, it's just like we just get to catch up. Yep. You know. Yeah, and for sure. It's it's been too long, man. Mm-hmm. So, what's um, what's on the agenda? So, as as always, we're gonna do a bit of a morale check. Yeah, we'll go through some gratitude. Yep, and then we have an update on our challenges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you you talked about an opportunity a couple of episodes ago. Yeah, want an update on that? That's right. And then we'll get into the meat of the show. Mm. So the vegan meat. The vegan meat. <laughs> so uh, morale check. Where are you at? I'm at a 10, man. Oh. I'm coming in all the way hot. I'm dressed in yellow and I'm feeling good. Nice. We're in the room and just because why not, you know? And I think we'll get into it a little bit later, but, you know, when it can often seem like there's so much doom and gloom out there and yeah. there is, Yep. you know, and so why not take the moment to just be like, nah, actually, you know, let me just be happy for me right now. I'm just going to decide right now, like all this garbage and BS that's happening outside, just, let's just leave it at the door. Yeah. And okay, cool. I'm here. I'm sitting here right now. Let me just channel the divine energies, man. Let's bring it. Love it. How about you? I was going to say I'm sitting at a six and a half, but with, with you saying all of that, I'm at a 10 as well. (laughs) I closed my eyes while you were speaking there and I, yeah, man. and I, uh, yeah, I connect with why not. So exactly. Why not? Why not baby? 10. <laughs> All right. What are we grateful for, man? Uh, I'm grateful for having a week in Rarotonga. Mm. Man, it was, it was the best. Yeah. I think I had, um, I mean, it was good, good. It was hot, Yeah, but it was nice to get away from a bit of rain and, yeah. um, and just there was no like the 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 four G or it was three G there was <laughs> shocking. Yeah, um, we we stayed with a mate, mm-hmm. um, so that was nice to to connect with with them. Yeah, um, but yeah, it was good just to disconnect, have a lot of family time. Yeah, and one of the best experiences of my life was yeah. swimming with turtles. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I, like I was saying before, it? it was, yeah, yeah it was, it, it was out in the ocean where you don't see the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. So many amazing fish out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just being able to see like, you know, 10, it was like 15, yeah. 15 turtles at least. Wow. Um, just in their natural habitat, you know? Yeah. Them um, being them. Yeah. It was just, it was by far the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Isn't it just. Like how how marvelous the creation is, right? Yeah. It's like something like that exists there. Correct. Yeah. There's that much beauty and just magic in the world that, yep. that something like that could exist. Hundred percent. You don't you don't realize how vast, yeah, the world, the ocean is. Yeah. Until you experience something like that, and it's like, man, this place is divine. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And you just gotta open your eyes and see it. See it. Very good, man. I am grateful for, yeah, just this this moment, you know, settling into it and it feels good. It's pumping me up. My body's feeling good. And also just, yeah, feeling feeling very grateful for my body. Um, So we've got our third race coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, And being, having been able to train, like I feel a lot stronger when I run now. Nice. Um, and then also just confident to know that I can go that distance. 
Because I think before we've like, I've like turned up and just a bit naive as well. Like, yeah, yeah I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but like. Is that mm, naive or arrogant? Um, oh yeah, there's <laughs> definitely <laughs> arrogance in there as yeah. well. You know, where you just turn up and you're like, yeah, I'll be fine. But it's actually like the psychology that plays on you mm -hmm. because you like before I was able, I was, I could do, a, I could run 15K, but I was just tired and like the mind games, yep. you know? Whereas last week when I went running and did my 15, like the mentality was just completely different. It's about, it's a lot more strategic. How, yeah. like, what am I doing? How yeah. am I running? Yeah. Um, I can let me break it off into, break the run into sections. And I wasn't afraid of running the big hills because I knew I had to do that because the race that we're going to do is going to have some hills in it. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just thankful for my body because even like, Post the run. Mm -hmm. Previously, when I've run that distance, my whole day is just it's a write off. A write off. Yep. I'd be tired, lethargic, yeah, yeah, in bed, yep. you know. And by the end of the day, I've got a headache. But having since having trained and continuing to train, just I just go about my day. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, what's happening? Yeah, you know. But um, yeah, just thankful to the the body to help me to get through and also letting me do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's the other thing as well is it's a lot of stress and a lot of strain on the body. On the so body, yeah. learning how to respond to it, learning to know when it needs rest. Cause I also got caught up. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do 10,000 steps a day, you know, but on some days you actually running when you, when I do those runs, I'm getting out to about 28,000 steps. Yeah, yeah. So like the day after actually doing another 10,000 is maybe not the best thing to be doing. And so I've also learned, am learning to just like be okay with not hitting it. Mm. Like it's fine. Yep. All it is is that you're not going to get a badge on the app that tells you you've yeah, done a streak, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, okay, cool. But I know inside that I've actually done that day's amount. Of, of course. So. You work on average. Yeah, man. Cool. Feeling good. Nice. Well, speaking of running, <laughs> let me give you a bit of an update. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I, uh, thanks to Vish for sending me the, um, my uh, running plan. Mm -hmm. Shout out Vish. Yep. Um, so I had started. It was going well. Feeling good. And yep. then I sprained my ankle pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was swollen. I was icing it every night. And just like any, any, just any sort of pressure, even like a week later, was this really sore? Yeah. And then... <laughs> Then when in Rarotonga, <laughs> I re-injured it, walking on some coral. Um, so again, it was swollen. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, like I was telling you just off camera, that it's sort of 70% right. Cool. Um, and i got a bit of time. Yep. I'm confident that I'm going to be able to do it. So yep. yeah, I'll just get back into running, do the rehab, get back into yep. the running. So I'm sort of cycling a little bit. Cool. Um, yeah. So getting my heart rate up, but. Not not putting too much pressure on it. Yeah. So nice. that's where I'm at. But I'm 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 confident that I'm gonna be able to You've gotta believe. Yeah, man. And if I gotta hop the whole way, <laughs> then I'll do it. Or walk. <laughs> that's fine as well. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get one of those scooters where you put one leg up. <laughs> <laughs> those are actually really fun, man. I've actually used like we're at uh, at a camp once and one of the, the nurses had one because she yeah. hurt her ankle. Yeah, yeah. And those things are so fun, man. If you can't get one of those. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about All right, man. Tell us about this dinner. Yeah, man. Dinner invites have been sent out. I'm glad to have received one. Of course. Of course. Now, I thought I'd just keep it just nice and small. Yep. Um, and like, you know, you kind of get through the... I was kind of like, okay, well, we've said we're going to do it. I said I was going to do it. You know, the challenge has been there. Everyone's just waiting. So, mm -hmm. like, the only person that I need to do it for is me. Mm -hmm. So, come on, let's just. And I couldn't sleep. One night I just couldn't sleep. So, yeah. it was that night before I sent it. I was just like, well, I'm not really doing anything. Let me just make the invite. So, I made it, put it out there, and yep. then done. Nice. So, it's the yellow dinner party. Again, it's all about positivity. Gonna have a yellow menu, yep. yellow food. Yep. Um, Can you tell us what the food is, or is that a? I want it to be a surprise. Okay, that's fine. I need to because I need to practice also. Yeah. So I've allowed myself enough time to make the the dishes. Yep. But I have been thinking about what I want to make for.
for some time now. Mm-hmm. And this week after like during work, I was also thinking like I was outside of a meeting. I was, I got there early to the meeting. So I was just like looking online, scrolling, yeah. looking at some recipes. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference between a Penang curry and a yellow curry? <laughs> <laughs> Which one was more nuttier, I think. Penang. Mm. Yeah. So there you go. It's either a yellow curry or a Penang curry. Yeah. And then depending on the starter or the main is dependent on whether or not I can actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. But the ideas are there. Nice. And I'm looking forward to it. And I think what I've been thinking about now is how do I curate? Cause I don't want it to just be you turn up for dinner. I think I want it to be about curating the experience. Mm-hmm. Well, know? I can help with that if you like. Yeah, man. That'd be cool. We can sort of yeah. do that part together like and it, we, sh- we can sh- record it as well. Yeah. It should be part of the evening, you know, sure. um, because it's all come through the, what we're doing yep. here, raising the vibration. Yep. And so that's why I changed the RSVP to a phone call. Mm-hmm. Because again, that's an opportunity to just check in with people yeah, yeah, yeah. and see how their week's going. Yeah. Now my, my wife called you on my behalf. Nah, mate. Is that acceptable? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, each if you've received the invite, you got an RSVP. Okay. So I'll be waiting for your Sweet. phone call. Sweet. I even told we were driving in the car and Jam's like, I'm RSVPing. I go, <laughs> well, she's something about how she was invited. Go, and then that's when after I was like, nah, you got a phone, phone call. call. Yep. So I'll be expecting a phone call from her as well. Nice. Very good. Um, just, just on, on updates. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've reached out to, uh, we haven't talked about this. Okay. Reached out to a venue. Oh, wow. Um, yep. So they've given us the dates that they have available in June. So oh, maybe sweet. just after this, we'll go through and then yeah. confirm a date. Cool. Um, so we can get some pricing. Well, that's exciting. Sweet. Cool. Yep. All right. Tell us about this opportunity that you had. Yeah. So the op- what it was around the Christmas holidays yeah. and my boss, Phil, he was at work. Oh, he was on holiday, actually, um, over in the islands. And then he messaged in and he's like... Oh, we've entered these awards in China <laughs> and they've just really, they've just announced that you've, we've won the category and they need someone to fly over to China to pick it up. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. What when? does that mean? Yeah. Like in the next week. Okay. <laughs> like that's really soon. Yeah. And so. Cause you had camp, camp that same week as well. I camped that same week. So I was like tossing up, like, can I go to this or this, yeah. you know, like I want to do both. Yeah. My mind was set. I'm going to do camp. But then this came and it was like, that's an opportunity. For that, sure. And it was an opportunity also because the people who had the awards were going to pay for us to attend flights and accommodation. Like you, that's yeah. hard to turn down. Yeah. And so it just so happened that it came my way and the opportunity was presented to me and do you want to go for it? And at first I was scared. I was like, I've already said no. Like, mm. I don't want to let these guys down because I've already said yes to them. Mm-hmm. But then I've never been to China. Like, that's scary as well. I'll be there by myself. I don't really, like, I don't have time to practice anything or learn, a, you know, like there's time, but you know what I mean? Yeah. But then I was like, it's an opportunity. I just got to. Grab with both hands. Just got to take it. Yep. And it got as far as even applying for my visa. Yeah. And even getting as close as saying, these are the flights I'll take. But then by that time, just the way that things ended up, it, we ran out of time to book or ran out of time on their end. So it was out mm. of my control. Mm. Like I did everything I absolutely could yep. to be there in my means, within my control, but it just worked out that I couldn't. Yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't caught up on that, you know, because I was like, I felt like I'd only be going once I landed there. Yeah. Otherwise up until then, I was like at any time, wasn't real. it's too good to be true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, and I think that's, there, there was the learning in that is like, you know, it's expectations and where you place them, mm-hmm. you know, cool. The opportunities, opportunities are always going to come and you can get super excited about them. But just know how much happiness we're investing into that one thing on it turning out. Yeah. And I was I was happy that I didn't go fully in. I was like, cool, if it works out, that's gonna be really cool. 
But at the same time, I had a whole week of camp quality. Yeah. And I knew that was going to get me, that was still going to give me happiness yep. being there. So it didn't, I didn't feel like I was losing either way. And we ended up having a, an amazing week at mm. Camp Quality. It's one of the best camps nice. that we've had. Yep. So, yeah, that was the the opportunity. I thought we should just close the end because we talked about it on a couple of episodes yeah, 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 yeah. but never really revealed what it was. Yep. But now that it's happened and gone, and that's why I didn't want to announce it then too mm. because, like, what if it didn't work didn't out? Happen, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Nice. All right. What are we talking about? So we are talking about the, I want to talk about the, the outside world versus the inside world. Mm -hmm. And is happiness a hard game? <laughs> you know, because like, I think the, I think we should talk about where this, this comes from and where we're talking about, like where we're speaking about it from. We, we kind of talk about this from a spiritual point of view. Um, like when we, we're both into, we both attend Chimay Mission and it's basically, we're learning about Vedanta and within Vedanta, the, the first rule of Vedanta is happiness comes from within. But having spoken to people lately, like in the time that we've actually been away from the podcast, just listening to people, listening to about what everyone's going through yep. outside in our network. Like people are struggling, man. Yeah, for sure. Life's hard. Mm -hmm. And having to, like, just imagining, like for me, I feel it's, it's, it's just not fair that people have to wake up and have negativity around them. You know, the outside world's continuously telling people you are not good enough. Questioning their every movement, you know, like I'm very grateful. And I know I come from a place of, privilege when you get to wake up in the morning and you don't have that, you know, you don't have that riding in on, on your back yeah. or having to have carry that, you know, and it's, it's sad that that is what some people have to deal with. Mm. So how do we, how do we, how can we help? And that's why I'm dressed in yellow, man, because it's like, if you're, ch you're tuning in, like, I want you to know that I'm here, that we're here. Yep. This is going to be that one place where you can guarantee you're going to get that positivity. Mm -hmm. There's that hope in the world that positive things exist. But I think today we want to go into what is this outside world? What is the inside world? And when you've got all these things coming from the outside world at you, all like negative energy, negative emotions, negative things. How do we, how do we, how do we see past it? Yeah. How do we move past it? What did you, um, what did you tell the people that you're speaking to? I just listened. Yeah. At the, at the time I didn't have the answers, you know? Like I, I couldn't feel like I could, I could say or do anything just then. It was just like, you know, because it's, it's easy to say, oh, just, you know, like don't pay attention to it because you can't, when it's people who are close to you and in your network, people you've relied on, yeah. you know, when it's your own parents, your own friends, your own family, your own partner, yep. that's hard. And when you've got that energy around you, that's full on, man. Mm. And that's when I feel like, you know, that's when it's hard to see happiness. And so how do you, how do we, how do we move past that? Yeah. Yeah. I want to be careful with, with what we say. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think like you said from a from a spiritual standpoint, mm. right? It's it's yes, happiness is is your birthright. Yeah. Right? Like everyone is born everyone who is born deserves to be happy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is within you like you said. It's not a matter of 
of trying to find happiness. Mm. It's a thing of unveiling it. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, all the stuff that people go through and suffer is is also true. Yeah. And real to them. Yep. Um, and I say to them because it's it is subjective. Yeah. Um what might bring unhappiness or sorrow to me won't do the same yeah. to you. Yep. And vice versa. Um Yeah. I want to I, I just want to be very careful. Yeah, of course. It's it's a tricky conversation to have. Yep. You know. Cuz then um, we can we can also oops, sorry. We can also get into into like real versus unreal yeah. as well, right? That's right. And There's so many facets to this. Correct. And real is something that was there in the past mm. and will be there in the future. Yeah. And is there in the present. Uh versus unreal is something that may have been something in the past. Mm. Could be something in the present, yep. showing differently, but might not exist in the future. Yep. Um, real is, is a constant um, and the only thing that is constant in this world again from a spiritual standpoint is mm. us and when I say us I don't mean the physical I mean the spiritual the, the higher yeah. self um, and change and change but again change is at a at a more um worldly level because mm. um, the spirit doesn't change no yeah right circumstances change your body changes things around us change and relationships that's, that's change the outside world which is the outside world yeah right so the inside world I think when we talk about the inside world it's it's who we are within yeah right it's what we can what we define as what we would define as our spirit mm. Um, you might call it your mind. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has different labels for it. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't change, right? And then that not changing, then yes, success and and happiness is all deserving. You are, you are fully deserving of all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, what we choose to do. And and again, I want to be careful, but I also want to be particular and very um, um, intentional of using the word choose. Yeah. As we tr as we choose to cover that with the unreal mm. things that are not constant, things that are always changing. Um, and because we choose to do that we think that that is our, or we think that that is us. And we think that's our entire world. Mm -hmm. Give an example. Um, um, uh, career, mm -hmm. for example, right? right? Yeah. Like we, things might not go well. Yeah. Um, but that, but things were going well. Yeah. At some point in time. Yeah. They're not going well right now. Yep. We've got no idea what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. So that's that's unreal, right? Right. It's changing. Yeah. But we sit on that in the moment and go, "This is us." Yeah. Um, and that determines our how who we how we think about ourselves, our worth, all of that sort of mm. stuff. Um, which again, funnily enough, is not real. Yeah. Um, but if we were to uncover all of that and reveal the our true identity which is happiness then but again man that's it's so hard to do yeah it's 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 years of work mm -hmm. um so if we were to take it to take it back up to the, the surface right yep and let's say you've just got someone in your ear telling you yep. you are not good enough yeah how do you get past that it's difficult cuz cuz like as humans, I think we're we're defined by our relationships, yeah, right to a certain extent yep. i'm I'm a father, I'm a husband, yeah, um and it's easy for me to say, 
ignore what they're saying, mm. but it's harder to do. And yeah. I know from personal experience. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing you can do is, have you heard of the, the circle of control, circle no. of influence? So if you, if you consider a big circle, right? And that's your circle of concern. And then within that is your, and so that's everything that, that is, that concerns you. Yeah. That could be the weather outside. That could be your neighbor's neighbors mowing the lawn at seven o'clock in the morning. It could right. be anything that, that would bother you. Yeah. Then we've got a circle within that circle. We've got a circle of influence, mm -hmm. which is things that are just out of your control, but you can have some sort of influence. You can choose the people that you hang out with. Right. Uh, if you don't like the color of the walls, you can choose to paint that. Paint them. Yeah. Um, and then you've got your circle within that circle of influence. So you've got your circle of concern, circle of influence. And then within that, you've got your circle of concern. Right. Right. Now, I think, and I was like this previously, this, my circle of concern was actually my circle of influence. Right. So I would think that the color of the walls was my concern. The people that I hang out with was my concern. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, my control. Yeah. But they're not. Right. The only thing you can control is this up here. Yeah. So wait, let's take a step back. So you said the circle of influence. Oh, sorry. So circle of concern, concern, which is the biggest circle and then inside within of that. that. So that's, so the circle of concern yep. is anything and anything that will piss you off. Yep. Basically. Yep. Then within that is your circle of influence. Yep. So that's the things that are slightly out of your control, but you, you can, can have influence on them. Yep. So again, the people you hang out with, mm -hmm. the food that you eat, the uh, Things you listen to. Things you listen to. Things you touch. Things you touch, your, yep. your, your environment. environment, all of yep. that sort of stuff, right? And then within that is your circle of control. control. Yeah. And so what I was saying is that I used to, cons con I used to um, mix up my circle of concern right. and my circle of influence. Yeah. And I think that's what generally people do. Yeah. Because um, the only thing you can control is... Yourself. Yourself, right? So what I started to do when I sort of understood this was, and by no means am I, am I of perfect in this because yeah. someone will say something to me tomorrow and I'll want to punch them in the face, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, who are in my circle of influence. Um, but you can only control your reaction to things. That's right. Right. So you might come and tell me that, um, I'm not, I'm not following my, my running plan mm. or, uh, I'm a bad parent because I told my son off or yeah. whatever it is, right. You might come and yeah. tell me that and I can choose to be upset about that or I can choose to, um, take that on. Yeah. And, and, um, so I'm reaching in and this says, uh, do your best, leave the rest, mm. right? So we do what we can with that information if it's helpful for yep. for us and the rest we forget about. So as hard as it is, I think yeah. that is unfortunately the only way yeah. that you can overcome um, people constantly in your ear. Yeah. You can only control your reaction to it. Yeah. Um, these are, especially if it's people that you can't get rid of. Yeah. Stop hanging out with. Yeah. Um, removing them from your life. Yeah. Um, if that's an, if that's an opportunity then to protect yourself, then you should do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it's so close to you, um, the only thing you can control is yourself and the way you react to it. Yeah. Um, I know that, I know that I'm sticking to my plan based on, my running plan based on my, my ankle, yep. the time I have available. That's right. I know I'm a good parent because of the 99.9% .9 of what I'm doing behind the scenes versus the one incident you saw. Yeah. For example. Yep. Um, and, and so why does that, it shouldn't bother me. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I like, your, I like what, what you said, thoughts? you know, like it's the 99% of things that you actually do and that you know. Correct. You know, I don't think we should discount the decisions we make. For sure. I mean, and, and people don't, people don't know our intentions. People yeah. don't know our thoughts. Yeah. People don't know our logic, our reasoning. Yeah. 
Um, so why let them have control over you? Why mm. let them have influence over you? Yeah. Why hand over your happiness to someone else? Yeah. And say, here, you take care of this for me. Yeah. Why? I like that. Yeah. Why? Keep it in, keep, let's keep it, let's keep it in-house. Mm. Keep it in your control. Yeah. I like, you know, when, when you've talked about the circle of um, concern, yep. influence and control, yep. you know, it's like, we can only control this much. We only have capacity to control that mm-hmm. much. And like, you just, you just got to dig down and find the strength and hold on to yeah. that. And yeah, I like what you said, man. It's that 99% hold on to that with, and and just, you got to find the strength and the courage to just have that conviction. Yep. That this is what I believe. Yep. Um, and then, and then I think it's also like at the same time, you know, we're talking about inside world, but outside world is rebuild the, or build that scaffolding and that support system. Like, correct. There's, there's people who are going to champion you. Yeah, for sure. You, yep. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Use them. It's, it's hard as well, right? Because yeah. when we talk about this sort of thing, it's, it's like... It's not yeah, easy. You, this you, is not easy. You want to use them as a scaffold, not a crutch, Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, you don't want to... Yeah. You want to explain the difference between yeah, like a crutch, and crutch. Like a... Like a when, the way I think about it is like the crutch is something you need to be able to move forward. Yeah. Right? Whereas a scaffold is something that sits on the outside generally. It's going to catch you if you fall. Correct. Or protect you from falling. Correct. Correct. Whereas the, the actual, yeah, the crutch is you actually need it to move forward. Correct. It's a, it's a need versus like a support. That's right. Example. Um, and, and be radically, um, what's the word? Um, like ruthless mm. about who that, who you're, who you have around you, who your scaffolding is. Um, yeah, be be brutal with that. I think we, we kind of say that as a place of we, where we come from is that like people carry energy. And I think that's something that you have to believe into, you know, energy and vibration. Yep. It's like when, you know how they say when someone walks in the room, you can feel it feel change. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what we mean by energy. And you're going to be on a wavelength with someone. And it's about finding the people that you want to be on the wavelength with. Mm -hmm. And that's what we mean by being radical about it, you know? And again, it's like, would you give your happiness to that person? And I think that's, that's how you can actually decide, you know, if I had, if I had a bowl of happiness of my happiness that I was to look after, who would you give it to? Who would you give it to? Who would you not give it to? Who would you trust to take care of? Trust to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a great exercise for everyone out there is who are the three to five people that you take your bowl of happiness and say, can you hold on to this for me? Well, um, because again, remember ultimately it's, it's in your control, Yeah. but you have to have people around you who are. Because then what that also does is then that helps us to understand who matters Mm -hmm. and what voices we listen to. There's going to be a thousand voices in the world. Yeah. You know, there's going to be people listening to this. Like you don't have to listen to this, No, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I think the, the things we listen to, the things we see, that's all important and all encompassing of this constant battle of the inside world and the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hundred percent what you fill your mind with becomes who you are again at a, at a surface level. Yep. Um, even things you eat. Yeah. You were showing me, um, something interesting just before. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like, we're talking on like the cellular microscopic yeah. cellular levels, you know, like the things we put into our bodies the things we say, the things we think, mm-hmm. everything that all changes your our physiology. Yeah, I mean, you're big on environment, your environment massively. as well, you know? Um, like they they say is, you know, you you design your environment and the desi- environment designs you in the same way 
you know, you design who you hang out with and then they design you. Um, you design what you eat and yeah. then it uh, shapes you. Yep. Um, the way you receive people, you know? What do you mean? Like, we don't, we don't necessarily know what everyone's going through. Mm. And there could be something you just say and then boom, you've, you've done something. You've, you've flicked a switch. Yep. But also, like, you don't, you don't know where people have come from. And the last thing someone wants is just for you to be like, oh, hi. Like, you know, like, just, well, like, when, when you receive someone, just welcome them with warmth. Mm. You know, like, I'm sure we'd all want that. So why don't we give that up? Yeah. And then 100% environment. You know, the, the, the space that we're in and the, the, again, we have to look at it from the levels of concern, influence, and control. The environment that we have control over, how do we, how do we allow that to be the best? What am I trying to say? Like Optimize it. Yeah. How do we optimize it for us to enable us to reach our potential? Mm. Because that, again, that the things you wake up to when you see, in the first thing in the morning, you know, the things you're listening to first thing in the morning, because that's what sets the tone. It's the morning montage. The morning montage. You know, practice the gratitude in the morning, practice gratitude in the evening so that you wake up with a good thought, go to yep. sleep with a good thought. Yep. All the things that you have to be grateful for. Yeah. All these little things, they, Which, st they stack up and they add up. Yeah. And it helps to build the confidence around your circle of control as yeah. well. Because you have to protect that. Yeah. Right. And if you're if you're iffy about it, if you're um, unstable about who, who you are, mm. what you believe in, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Then it's easy to, for people to infiltrate your circle of control. And everyone's going to have an opinion. Everyone's going to tell you you can't. Yeah. For every one person that believes in you, there's going to be a hundred that are going to say. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important for people to to define their their circle of control as well. Yeah. Like like we, again, we could speak it on a, on a at a spiritual level, mm. right? But I think it's important for everyone, and ourselves including to define what our circle of control looks like. So I think that would be cool for everyone to do, right? Yeah. Is define what your circle of control looks like and at a time where at a time where you're at peace with yourself. Um, not at a time where someone's just pissed you off or someone said something about you at yeah. a time where you find, find some time where you're at peace with yourself. What does my circle of control look like? What really matters to me? Who am I? Mm -hmm. Um, cause then when shit happens, that's when you can rely on that. Yeah. That's when you can fall back on say, actually, this is out of my circle of control. So. <laughs> get out of here get out of here man for real but even like if you have to like have a visual representation of it you know draw the circles and put in the middle who is in your circle of control yep. what, it, what is it that you can what control, is it you can control yeah. so when shit hits the fan that's what you go to yep. that's your truth yep. anything else outside of that yeah we're, we're just that's just noise yeah exactly because then anything you say to me is exactly that, just noise. It's not going to bother me because, well, I can't do anything about it. So, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> what can I do? Yeah. I'm just doing, I'm just trying to do my best. Yeah, you know, and I don't like know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Like obviously, you want to get to a point where like it doesn't compute, right? Yeah. You can say something to me, and it's like in one ear, out the other. It's like, okay, well, cool. Yeah. It's just a. It's a passing thought. Mm. Or. Yeah, in one ear, out the other. Because it actually doesn't matter. You yeah. can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that'd be a cool exercise for everyone to do cool. is define, of define your circle of control. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, the three to five people who you're willing to give your bowl of happiness to. Mm. My bowl of happiness looks like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, carpety chocolate brown fudge ice cream. Oh yeah, so good. Has we managed to, to find that in Rarotonga. Did you? Yeah, oh, there wow. was one supermarket. They had like so much vegan stuff. We were like, it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. We we're like, 
Over the moon. You're in paradise, man. Paradise. Paradise eating paradise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I like it, man. Thanks. That was a... I know that was that was hard. That's something that is hard to talk about. Yeah. And um, because there's so many factors to it. Correct. You know, and like it's stuff that requires a lot more discussion, a lot more background. And yeah. we're again, we're just trying to like looking at something on a microscopic mm-hmm. level on one thing, mm-hmm. but there's so many factors to it. Correct. We're looking at it something at a microscopic level, which is which we're trying to cover at a general That's right. population sort of thing, right? Yeah. So again, if if this resonates with you, then reach out. Yeah. And and if it doesn't resonate with you and you want, you know, want someone to um dig a little deeper with you, then one on one, off yep. camera, all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Then again, reach out to us because we're we're willing to help. And my boy's got his um sign ups yes. out as well. Yep. So all part of your own challenges. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. Anything else? No. I'm, I'm definitely sitting at a 10 right now. Same. You know, and I think that's also two different types of 10. I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can have excitement and very outwardly expressed tense. Yeah. But also internally, like, you can just, you can, it's a quiet 10 too. Yeah. Who are we calling? <laughs> I'm on I'm on a do not disturb in the podcast, man. But my boy is just the uh, he's FaceTiming me. All right. Let's just can, hey, you speak it out? can you speak it out, man? I'm oh, sorry, man. How how's it going? It's good. What are you up to? Oh, I'm just in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> That's sweet. Me too. <laughs> what a coincidence. Um I just want to RSVP to the to the yellow dinner. Oh right. I want to let you know I'll be there. Cool. Sweet. All right, man. That's all. Sounds good. All right. I'll see you there. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> see ya. Sorry, oh. I just, just had to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you so much, Perry. Oh, uh, thank you. Man. Yeah, definitely, definitely feeling a 10. And I just want to say to the, the people out there who are in the trenches, we are, we are there for you, man. Look up. You can see the yellow flag. Yeah. No, with you. We and are for there. you. Yes. We're there with you, man. Woman, whatever, <laughs> yeah. anything, you know, the, the, like we are championing positivity. The, the ideal, the truth, yeah. it is there. Yep. We believe in you. It's going to, it's going to be hard. It is hard. We go through it. We don't turn up every day with tens, no. you know, but it's something we can aspire to. Mm-hmm. Something that we're we're tuning into, we're we're trying to change our frequency and filtering out the noise. I think that's the most um, important thing, mm. and bringing it back to the the bowl of happiness. Mm-hmm. That is the one thing we can control is our own bowl of happiness and protect that thing. Like your life depends on it, you well, know. It does. It's this, this, <laughs> the sweetest nectar of the universe. You don't want to poison that. No. You don't want any sour tastes, you know? And so while you're down in the, the trenches, make some friends, know who you can trust, who you can rely on as a scaffold, you know? And hopefully if you need that support, we are there for you. Just reach out. And that's it. I think that was, that was my object, objective of the episode mm. is just to show that there's hope to have the hope and like you can get down into some dark places but just got to focus on the light even if you can just just see the little glimmer yeah like it's there the, you know the what's there chance that it exists that's all i want you yeah, to know yeah yeah interesting it's like you know in the the darkest times like there's still light and that's it that's it from me. Nice. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks, we guys. hope this was your dose of positivity. <sighs> I'm feeling full, man. Thank, thank you, you so much, Perry. And thank you. Until next time. Be human. Be, be now. now. <laughs>